Hi there everybody and welcome to this revision video on life in Elizabethan times. Today we're going to be looking at Elizabethan exploration. Um, this time period of Queen Elizabeth I was a time period where the foundations of the power of the English Navy and the whole concept of Elizabethan exploration and colonisation began. So we're going to focus on the role of various English sailors during this time like John Hawkins and Francis Drake. We're going to talk about the significance of Francis Drake's circumnavigation of the globe. We're going to think about how some of the work of people like Hawkins and Drake um, sowed the foundations of the Spanish Armada and um, the defeat of the Spanish Armada in 1588. We we'll look at the impact of these voyages on trade look at the privateers and the piracy and the attacks on Spanish treasure ships. And then we're going to look at the role of Walter Raleigh. And we're going to look um, really very much at the sort of case study of the attempts to create a colony in uh, the in America um, in terms of the Roanoke colony and also the landing at Chesapeake Bay in 1587 as well. So without further ado, let's find out more about Elizabethan exploration. OK, so in this revision video, we're looking at the key topic of life in Elizabethan times. And the part of the course that we're going to be looking at is the explorers, the trade in the new world. We're going to focus particularly on the two individuals of Sir Francis Drake and Sir Walter Raleigh as well. So to understand Elizabethan exploration, it's really important that you understand about the role and significance of these three individuals, Francis Drake, John Hawkins and Walter Raleigh. And you can obviously pause this slide and read about their potted biographies and a bit more information. It's also important to note that at the time, these three individuals were regarded as heroes of English history and people in Elizabethan society were, were kind of transfixed by the, the journeys and the voyages that these people went on particularly Francis Drake when he circumnavigated the world between 1577 and 1580. I think it's important though that we also recognise that these individuals, particularly John Hawkins as well, were involved in the trade at the start of the trade of enslaved people during this time as well and also their role in the idea of colonisation that we see in terms of sowing some of the seeds of the British Empire. We also remember um, some of the problems and some of the negative that, that that also created. So it's really, really important that we reflect on how these individuals remembered very differently at the time to how we would regard their achievements and their significance nowadays um, in the 21st century. So let's have a look at John Hawkins. So John Hawkins lived between 1532 and 1595. As I've already said in the introduction, he was involved in the trade of enslaved people um, and he made money out of that. And I think that's very important for us to reflect on and to think about when we're learning about um, John Hawkins. And um, in Elizabethan society, um, he was an important and powerful person. Um, a profound event um, that affected him was in 1568 when with Francis Drake his fleet was attacked by the Spanish and that led him particularly with Francis Drake as well both of them to seek sort of revenge and there were more attacks and particularly in the 1570s there was a lot of attacks from um from English um, boats from English they sort of call themselves privateers but in many ways they're just really pirates um and they were raiding Spanish treasure ships and, and stealing um you know the the gold and and the silver and and the jewelry from the spanish um treasure ships who of course themselves had plundered that wealth uh, in terms of their own colonization of the americas in 1578, he was made treasurer of the English Navy. And one of the John Hawkins most significant um, aspects in this time period is his design of new ships, which was really important in the Spanish Armada. He changed the, the design of um, English ships to make them basically faster, more, manoeuv more manoeuvrable and more heavily armed. And this was absolutely crucial when you are revising the Spanish Armada to reflect on his role um, in creating the foundations for that success. Um, in 1595, he was traveling on a raid to the Caribbean and he actually um, died um, the night before an attack, an unsuccessful attack on Puerto Rico. So that's um, John Hawkins. So he's a significant individual for you to know about. 
So we saw a huge increase in Elizabethan times in voyages of exploration in terms of English sailors, um, such as Francis Drake and John Hawkins and Walter Raleigh, going on voyages of exploration. So getting in their boats and discovering new worlds. We know Christopher Columbus in 1492 sailed and discovered the Americas and there other people obviously that are involved. Um, and this really escalated in the time of Elizabeth. So what were the reasons behind this? Well, firstly, England very much wanted to weaken Spain and challenge the power of Spain during this time. They'd, they'd seen Spain and obviously England and Spain had been allies. We know that Mary I had been married to Philip of Spain. And England had seen at close quarters the, the power and wealth that Spain had got from the New World. And therefore, Elizabeth and her government, they wanted a piece of this and they wanted to be able to take some of this wealth as well. Um, a lot of it is to do with investors and profits. We've already talked about the rise of the gentry class during this time. We already talked about how there's a lot of money swinging around the, the upper groups in Elizabethan society. So many English nobles invested in the voyages as a way of making money. Elizabeth I herself invested in voyages. She was a huge investor in Francis Drake's circumnavigation of the world between 1577 and 1580. Um, and, and this brought home lots of money. So, for example, when Drake attacked Spanish treasure ships carrying gold from Mexico and silver from Peru, it brought home treasures which would be worth 30 million in today's money. It's 20,000 pounds at the time. I think also the collapse of the cloth and the wool trade, particularly the collapse of the market in Antwerp because of the disruption of the, the wars in the Netherlands, for example, meant that merchants were looking for new markets and they wanted to sell new goods around the world. So previously, England had perhaps traded at very close quarters within Europe with, um, with the Netherlands, for example. And um, now England was looking for more trade routes into the Americas um, and into other parts of the world as well. I think the Elizabethans as well also sought to spread the idea of the Protestant religion around. And that was certainly a driving force behind setting up the colonies over in America with uh, Walter Raleigh wanting to set up um, the Virginia colony and going to Roanoke in 1595, for example. And I think also um, there's a certain sort of heroism at the time. I've talked about this already in this presentation, but people like Drake, for example, were presented in books as heroes and the inventing of the printing press enabled people to learn about these explorers. And, and many people would have aspired to be to be, you know, like Francis Drake. Uh, and there's lots of stories. We know the the age old story about how Francis Drake was supposedly playing bowls when the, when he spotted the Spanish Armada. You know, and, and these stories became part, I think, of, of sort of English folklore. And, and, and obviously now a days we're, we're rewriting those stories and we're reflecting on these individuals in a, in a very different way. But for years and years after Elizabethan times, these people like Francis Drake were seen as, as, as heroes of, of English history. And um, the English sailors as well, the English seamen were very well trained. They were well led. They grew up on the coast. England, obviously, as an island nation and um, is, is obviously going to be experienced in seafaring. And, um, you know, people like Drake and Hawkins were successful in leading overseas voyages. They inspired loyalty from their crews. So England had the capability to actually go on these voyages of exploration in terms of the location of England, the fact that England's an island with lots of coastline, etc. Right, so one of the things you really need to know about is how Francis Drake circumnavigated the world 1577 to 1580. This was a voyage and uh, he wanted to impress Elizabeth I. He wanted to take um, treasure, gold, silver and other treasure from the Spanish. Um, so he set off in 1577. You can see there, um, you know, the route that he took, for example, um, going down to the Americas, for example, and um, starting off in the Americans. Americas raiding various places down there, going around the tip of South America um, up the sort of west coast of South America, the west coast of North America, what's now obviously the United States of America, um, across the Pacific um, and through, um, you know, past the northern part of Australia, for example, and through the Indian Ocean, back around Africa. OK, so this was a, you know, this is a huge achievement. This is something that, that happened 440 years ago. And obviously, you know, we talked about, you know, how there were books written about adventurers during this time. This would be something that would have inspired many people. Elizabeth I herself made a lot of money at this voyage and she actually knighted him on board his ship, which was called the Golden Hind, uh, when he returned at Plymouth on the 26th of September 1580. And he was actually knighted and became Sir Francis Drake in recognition of this achievement. 
So Francis Drake's um, voyage was was highly significant. Um, it certainly was an event which helped challenge the power of Spain in the New World. We've already talked about how he was knighted, and he was the first Englishman to successfully sail around the world. Um, he actually, and this is a stat worth remembering, he brought back gold, silver, and jewels worth around £140,000, um, which would be £200 million in today's money. And the Queen um, Elizabeth... Um, she had invested and the money that she made from this um, voyage was worth more than her entire income for a whole year. So this was really, really a, a lucrative trade. Um, but again, we talked about poverty in Elizabethan society. This was a trade that was making the wealthy more wealthy and wasn't particularly filtering down towards the poorest in society. Um, Drake had also claimed new lands for England and made valuable trading contacts with the Spice Islands, which is a group of islands near Indonesia at that time. So what factors actually made exploration possible? Well, there's new trading companies that set up during this time. So there's a Muscovy company um, to trade with Russia, which is pre-Elizabeth. But then there's the Eastland company set up in 1579, and that was to trade with timber, tar and rope with Scandinavian countries. And then the Levant uh, company was set up in 1581 to trade goods such as currants and dyes in the Mediterranean. And then right towards the end of Elizabeth's rule, which was really, really significant in the development subsequently of the British Empire, the East India Company was set up in 1600 to trade in the Far East in things like spices, cotton, silk and teas. Um, and you can see here that what actually made this exploration possible, you've got things like better navigation, for example, so maps and sea charts, the printing press, means that these can all be printed really easily. You've got the magnetic compass, compass, which improves navigation. And then the ship design improved a lot as well. So the use of triangular sails, which could be easily turned. The, the English were fantastic at, um, at sailing. The whole phrase sailing close to the wind comes from the English ships during this time. They were able to really manoeuvre well through the water. And, and that was obviously crucial in the um, defeat of the Spanish Armada in 1588 as well. Improved rudders gave the the crew more control in steering the ships and then these ships were also fitted with the latest rapid firing guns which meant that the English were very good at targeting the Spanish treasure ships and fighting against the Spanish treasure ships during this time. So this was what made that exploration possible. So Walter Raleigh, so who's Walter Raleigh? He was a very flamboyant character and he was uh, very much a favourite of Elizabeth in the 1580s. And um, he was at court and he decided that he wanted to set up a colony in North America, which he would have named Virginia. And he financed two voyages to Roanoke in 1585 and to Chesapeake Bay in 1587. Um, and we'll talk more about those in just a, just a moment. He actually fell out of favour with Elizabeth in uh, 1592 when he married um, Bess Throckmorton, who was one of Elizabeth's maid of um, honour. And But he, he did so without her permission. So Raleigh and uh, also Beth Throckmorton were sent to the Tower of London for a period of time. Um, he was obviously released, um, but he was banned from court and had to wait five years before Elizabeth would speak to him again. So very much fell out of favour. Led an expedition in 1595 to South America um, to try and find the legendary city of El Dorado, which was supposedly full of gold. Um, and in 1596, he wrote a book called The Discovery of the Large, Rich and Beautiful Empire of Guyana, telling of the riches. Um, and, and this encouraged other explorers as well. Um, in the end, um, he was actually executed during the rule of James I in 1618 after um, Spanish pressure, they didn't like him very much. Um, so that's the, the sort of career of Walter Raleigh. So he's an important individual for you to be aware of. So Raleigh wanted to build a colony in North America, partly to rival the power of France and Spain as Catholic countries. He was a strong Protestant, Raleigh. Um, he wanted to increase England's power. Um, he wanted to um, spread the ideas of the Protestant religion around the world. He wanted a military base to attack Spanish settlements in the Caribbean, new trade links. And obviously, we know that England's population grew during Elizabeth's rule. So he hoped that people could emigrate to North America for a better life. So in 1585, an expedition went to Roanoke. It actually set sail in 1584, but a 1585 expedition went to Roanoke 
which is on the east coast of North America. Now, Raleigh wasn't allowed to leave the royal court, so the expedition's actually led by Sir Richard Grenville and uh, Ralph Lane. Um, seven ships um, went out there carrying 600 people, but the storms that they encountered meant that only one ship survived. Um, so the first um, attempt to create a colony at Roanoke wasn't particularly successful. Um, when the ship arrived, it got stuck in sandbanks, the storms approached, and the settlers lost most of their supplies, including the seed they brought to try and create a new life for themselves out there. So um, Richard Grenville returned to England to get more settlers while Ralph Lane remained behind with, behind with around 100 men to actually build a settlement on Roanoke Island. Now at first the relation between the settlers and the Native Americans were at first really really good but as supplies ran low there were tensions between the two and Lane actually attacked the Native Americans um, and as supplies continued to run low the colony was abandoned and those settlers were then rescued by Francis Drake. So the first attempt to set up a colony at Roanoke was, was not successful um, and then another attempt was made to set up a colony um, further around the coast at Chesapeake Bay in 1587. So the, the um, the attempt to set up a colony at Chesapeake Bay in 1587, Lane had suggested this would be a better location, so Raleigh sent a second expedition led by a man called John White. Um, now, ships, uh, the ship's master pilot was worried about hurricanes and dropped the settlers off on Roanoke Island, and the Native Americans were suspicious of the settlers, remembering, obviously, the, the failed attempt in 1585. Um, White was in need of supplies, and he decided to return to England um, but the ship was attacked by French pirates and White was badly injured fighting them off. White did eventually get back to England, but he was told that all the ships were needed to defend England against attack from the Spanish Armada. And therefore, they didn't immediately go back to actually reinforce the attempt to set up a colony at Chesapeake Bay. White eventually returned to Roanoke in 1590 and there was no sign of the colony whatsoever. What White did find is the letter CRO, um, CRO carved into a tree. And he thought this was an indication that settlers might have moved to live with the friendly Croatian tribe, which was to the south of Roanoke. But the stormy weather stopped him from ever getting there. And to this day, we don't know what happened to those settlers, but they were never found. So what's the impact of the voyages of exploration? Well, it led to a stronger economy, improved trade links, more money coming into the English economy, new trading companies set up like the Levant Company uh, and the East India Company. And that very much, as I said before, laid the seeds uh, of foundation for the British Empire. It certainly helped improve the Navy and um, the, the new ships that were designed by John Hawkins were crucial to the overhaul of the English Navy um, and would eventually enable the English to repel the Spanish Armada in 1588. Um, and as I said, the whole idea of the colonization from Walter Raleigh did create, although it wasn't successful at the time, it created that idea of um, creating an empire and obviously during the time of James I we had um, Puritan colonies that were set up in America like Jamestown for example um, and this very much laid the foundations of the British Empire. So thanks for listening and um, that's um, a revision video about the impact of Elizabethan exploration. We've looked at the English sailors of John Hawkins and Francis Drake and the circumnavigation of the world from Francis Drake from 1577 to 1580, the significance of the voyages and trade and also the role and significance of Walter Raleigh. Thanks for listening. Bye bye.